We've got big updates on Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto. When will they be making their Dodgers Cactus League debuts? And also some interesting injury updates on Walker Buehler and Emmett Sheehan. That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. It's time for Dodger Baseball. That's right. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credential member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and join the party and subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, hit that like button. Also, just a reminder, we're getting close to 85,000 subscribers. When we do, we'll be giving away a brand new Yoshinobu Yamamoto Dodgers jersey. And all you have to do to be eligible for the giveaway is be subscribed to the channel. By the way, have those notifications on and also comment Yamamania down below. It's all you've got to do and you'll be eligible to win. And as always, I'm looking for your fire takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. What are your expectations for Shohei Otani at the plate? Are you expecting 50 plus home runs? Are you expecting a 40-40 season? And also same goes with Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Do you expect him to be the ace of the Dodgers? Hope he can be can he be a Cy Young winner? Will he win Rookie of the Year? And is your confidence level on Walker Buehler starting to drop a little bit? Let me know down below. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So I'm calling it right now. The Dodgers are going 192-0-1 this season. They're going to win the rest of their spring training games. They're going to go 162-0 in the regular season. They're going to go 11-0 in the postseason. 192-0-1 for the unstoppable 2024 Dodgers. Of course, I am only kidding. It is spring training. The wins and losses means next to nothing. Most important thing about spring training is that your best players are getting ramped up. And that's exactly what's happening for the Dodgers. Dodgers. And finally, we have the answer to the question that we've been asking all spring training long. When will we see Shohei Otani make his Dodgers debut? And now we have that answer. It will be Tuesday against the Chicago White Sox. Otani will be in the lineup. And the most important thing to look for is how close he gets to 50 at bats. And you got to start that process. Now you get to 50 at bats in one game, but Otani has already stated that those at bats can come from live games. And come from simulated games and come from batting practice. So he's probably only going to play in, I'd say less than half of the Dodgers spring training games, most likely, but he is putting in that work on a daily basis. And, we saw a couple days ago, he spoke to reporters, and he told us that, look, he's going to get those 50 at-bats and that he's right on schedule. Here's what Otani told us a few days ago. I feel like I have um, more than enough time to get the 50 at-bats. I can simulate it inside with the Trajek machine. I could do it in um, live at bats, so I'll have enough time. There's not a um, huge difference playing um, within the game or with inside. Um, the main thing he's looking for is the timing aspect when he's laid on pitches or early, how his body reacts, how his bat reacts, so it's not too big of a difference. Feeling good at the plate, um, seeing the ball well, and elbow wise, there's nothing there. Yeah, I don't really feel like it's ahead of schedule. I feel like we're right on schedule, which is a really good thing, and my body's reacting really well so far. So everything's trending in the right direction. So this is great news because there's been no setbacks. He's right on schedule. He's not going to put any additional pressure on himself. Otani knows his routine. Being around him, seeing him work on his craft, that's what really stood out to me. Is This is someone who, yes, he's going to take any advice and any feedback from the Dodgers staff, but this guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's perfected his routine, and he knows exactly what it takes to get ready for a season. And he's someone that puts in the work. And it, Everything is very calculated. There is no wasted reps. Everything he does has a purpose. And I think that that is rubbing off on his teammates. How just 
calculated and formulated that routine is that he has. And he's someone that knows what it takes to get to where he needs to be. He knows he's not where he needs to be right now, but with those 50 at-bats, he's going to be in a good place to get things going in Korea. Because let's not forget, he's only been facing live pitching until recently, and that's coming off that injury. So I like where Otani's at. I think that he's in a perfect spot. And I think really more at this point, it's about some of the off the field stuff, some of the just not baseball related stuff, getting to know your teammates, fully embracing your teammates. I asked Dave Roberts last week, I said, look, we've seen the moonshots. We've seen the batting practices that have been seen around the world that have gotten millions and millions of views. But how is he in the clubhouse when there's no cameras around? How is he interacting with his teammates? And he told me, Dave Roberts, that his engagement, his level of engagement with his teammates has been, quote, next level. And I've seen it myself. He always has a smile on his face. He's someone that I think brings some levity to situations. I mean, you saw him kind of jazzing his interpreter, Ipe, with the way he threw his medicine ball the other day. So this is someone that does put in the work, and his work ethic is off the charts, but he does with a smile on his face. He does it in a relaxed way where he's having fun while doing it. He's not some robot out there, right? He's not like Ivan Drago in Rocky IV or anything like that. That's not what Otani does. He puts in the work, but he also I think he has a little more fun than a lot of people like to realize. And he's someone that Dave Roberts told me too, has been smiling and laughing. And Dave Roberts was told by someone that he's never seen, that they had never seen Otani smile or laugh this much in his entire time in the league. So that tells you a lot about that. And I think as far as the expectations for the season goes, Otani's going to have a monster year. It's just how monster of a year is he going to have? You look at his fan graph projections right now, they are extremely low, in my opinion. Fan graphs has been playing 151 games, making 651 plate appearances, hitting 39 home runs, slashing 266, 368, 548, a 379 weighted on base average, a 141 weighted runs created plus, and a 3.9 F4. So, of course, that's without pitching. That's without playing a defensive position. So the war numbers aren't going to be through the roof, but I do think he has the potential to have a monster season, someone who could hit north of 50 home runs. I saw in the LA Times people in terms Currently with the Dodgers, we're throwing out the idea of him having a 40-40 season. You only had five players in Major League Baseball history that have had 40-40 seasons. By the way, on a quick aside here, Matt Kemp is back with the Dodgers organization as an advisor. He was objectively robbed of the 2011 MVP when Ryan Braun, who was testing positive for PEDs at the time, and he didn't have a better season than Kemp by every war metric and every metric that you need to determine who wins the MVP. And if Matt Kemp had hit one more home run that season, he would have had a 40-40 season. He would have probably won that MVP. So I think the path to an MVP for Shohei Otani is that he does something statistically rare. And there's only been five players in Major League Baseball history that have hit 40 home runs and stolen 40 bases in a season. Can you name them? Well, I'll give you the answer right now. Jose Canseco, he was the first to do it. He did it in 1988 with the Oakland A's when he hit 42 home runs and stole 40 bases. Then in 1996, Barry Bonds with the Giants, 42 bombs, 40 stolen bases. Then 1998, Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, 42 home runs and 46 stolen bases. Then in 2006, Alfonso Soriano with the Nationals, he hit 46 home runs, had 41 stolen bases, and then last season, of course, Ronald Acuna Jr., 41 home runs, and 73 stolen bases. So if Shohei Otani becomes the sixth player in Major League Baseball history to have 40 stolen bases and 40 home runs, maybe even without pitching and playing a defensive position, maybe he could still win the National League MVP. Now, will it happen? It'll be interesting because from a speed standpoint, He's in the 63rd percentile in sprint speed. Also, his career high in stolen bases is 26, which 
he got back in 2021. So it could happen, and if he wants to do it, he can absolutely do it. And he's definitely going to put him in advantageous positions with the type of protection that he has in this lineup. This is going to be a guy that's going to be hitting with the likes of Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Will Smith and Teoscar Hernandez and Max Muncy. He is going to do damage. There is no doubt about that. So right now, what you need to look for for Shohei Otani is just getting the feel, getting the timing down, getting locked in, and getting those 50 at-bats. Where that comes in spring training games or live BPs or simulations, he's going to get it. He's going to be ready. You are going to see Shohei Otani in Seoul, Korea, barring some type of injury, which, hey, cross your toes. Cross your fingers, knocking every piece of wood you can find, right? But I think that you got to feel good about Shohei Otani. Now, the other Dodgers debut that we're going to see this week is for the starting pitcher, the ace that they signed this season, the top free agent starting pitcher available, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He signed a 12-year, $325 million deal with the Dodgers. And Dave Roberts, he wasn't able to completely confirm it, but it, all indications are that he's going to make his Cactus League debut on Wednesday. So you're going to see Otani Tuesday, Yamamoto Wednesday, and you're probably looking at two innings tops. He'll probably make a couple more starts during spring training. And even when he does make his start, presumably in the Dodgers season opener against the Padres in Seoul, Korea, probably going to go 75 pitches, something like that. Maybe five innings, six innings tops, depending on how efficient he is. Of course, a couple days ago, I asked Dave Roberts, I said, hey, Dave, is it fair to say that Yoshinobu Yamamoto is going to be starting in the Dodgers opening series against the Padres? And here's what Dave told me. And when it comes to Yamamoto, when you consider the talent level, if everything goes as planned, I mean, usually way, way deep into March, but now it's an open day starter. But is it fair to say he'll be pitching one of the Dodgers' first two games in Korea? I think that's a safe bet. Um, obviously, you know, things can change. Um, it's two regular season games. Um, but it's just two games. Uh, so I, I think that it's fair to say that that's our hope. Um, but I'm not, I don't think I am or we're beholden to that um, if it doesn't make sense. So Dave says right there it's going to be a safe bet. I don't even think there should be any action on the board in Las Vegas. Yamamoto is going to be getting the ball. I mean, you get $325 million to be the ace of your staff. You have to be on the mound towing the rubber on opening day for the Dodgers. He's nasty. He's filthy. Just watch him during his live BP sessions. The command is pristine. I saw him just absolutely dominate Jason Hayward and strike him out twice. And he's not even at 100%. I was talking to Will Smith and asking him about that splitter, which is going to be the best splitter in baseball to start his career already day one. And he said that, yeah, it's going to be a great pitch, but he doesn't have it dialed in to where it's going to be. So it's not completely dialed in at this point. But it's going to be. It's something that takes a couple of weeks to really get that complete feel for. And by the time the season rolls around, I expect that splitty to be absolutely elite. So we're not quite there yet, but we are getting there. So get extremely excited about Yoshinobu Yamamoto. That's going to be absolutely electric. I know it's definitely not Shohei Otani, but I'm almost equally as excited to see Yamamoto. Because, because let me tell you, he is a massive superstar. Massive superstar in Japan. He's just not like an ace, okay? This is a superstar star and outside of Shohei Otani he is the most famous man in Japan of course Otani he's Michael Jackson Elvis Presley the Beatles all rolled into one but Yamamoto is a big star in his own right and he has a chance to do some really special things in Dodger Blue now staying on the pitcher front Dave had some very interesting comments about Walker Bueller. He said about Bueller, Walker looked good, but I think he's still searching. The ball is coming out well, but I think he needs another pen. He's still kind of in not rehab mode, but he's got to get to the point where you're getting hitters out. He's not quite there yet. He's still working through some things in his delivery. He'll get there. The most important thing is the teeth of the baseball is good and the life of the baseball coming out is good as well. Walker is a guy that has really good feel for his body, body awareness, where his hands are supposed to be. He's just not repeating it and getting the feel that he feels he needs to have. So, yeah, I mean, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, sometimes when you're back from Tommy John surgery, yeah, you're back in the velocity, even if it's not 
down by a lot. It's the feel. It's the feel for the baseball and just kind of getting back to the guy that you were. So, look, you also had Mark Pryor a couple days ago saying they didn't really complete his rehab last season. So, we knew that he wasn't going to make the opening day roster. They was going to start the season on the IL. But I think that it's definitely be something that we're going to want to monitor, just his progress and getting back and just to see how he feels. Because you don't want him taking up that roster spot when you can have someone on there. You could even have him on the 60-day IL, potentially. So hopefully all things get to the point where he's feeling really good and we start to see him in May. But look, let's not forget here. It's about October, not May, not June for Walker Buehler. I think that if you get at least 100 innings out of him this year, but really quality innings, and he's someone that has a lot in the tank for the postseason, that's the most important thing. But yeah, definitely at this point, it's kind of interesting considering the fact that we were discussing him as a possible starter for the NLDS, and that's five months ago, and he's still not ready to go. But another interesting update about Emmett Sheehan. Dave said about Emmett Sheehan, Emmett is coming along well. He threw that bullpen to Shohei and then another one a few days ago and just a little body soreness. I think it was a couple of days of no throwing. I'm not sure when he's going to pick up a baseball again, but there was just overall soreness. Nothing alarming, truth be told. I think when he got in there against Shohei, he might have ramped it a little bit more because he was in the batter's box. So just a little sore, nothing serious. So I find that pretty interesting that Emmett Sheehan, he's seeing Shohei Otani, who's kind of wants to give it his all kind of want to hit that NOS there in fast and the furious trying to empty the tank because Hey, he got that adrenaline going knowing that he's facing the best player on the planet. So it's understandable, but some of these young guys, you're going to see an increased workload. The Emmett Sheehan's, the Bobby Millers, guys like that. So that's something to look for this season. How do they handle that? How do they avoid any setbacks and things of that nature? But Emmett Sheehan, just talking to him and just looking at him, he's a big dude. Big dude, strong dude, and explosive stuff. So, yeah, if he was wanted to kind of give it a little more because it was Otani, I have no issue with that, but... It's going to be something to monitor. And guys like Gavin Stone, Landon Nack, Kyle Hurt, Michael Grove, I love the depth. I love these young pitchers within the organization. They are going to get their opportunities. And it's going to be a battle for that fifth rotation spot. Who's going to fill in while Walker Buehler is out? Landon Nack looked really good. Gavin Stone looked really good. I think the key for Gavin Stone, can you continue to refine and master your attack plan against major league hitters? I mean, four-seam fastball up in the zone, change-up tumbling out of the zone, you're not going to see that on strike one, right? You want to get ahead in the count. You do that by implementing that sinker, using that cutter, the east to west. So big league hitters can't just sit on the changeup, on the fastball. And if you can manage that, if you can master that north, south, east, west, and throw strikes, he's nasty. Gavin Stone is someone who has really, really good stuff. He can hit 96 on the gun, and that changeup is nastier than a gas station bathroom. So look for Gavin Stone. He's my early pick to get the opportunity to fill in as the Dodgers' number five starter heading into the season with Walker Buehler out. But Landon Act, though, I mean, the way he's improved his body, he's really slimmed down. He saw a nutritionist, and he cut out some things with his diet. You're seeing him use the curveball and the, all of his pitch mixes that really kind of taken him to the next level. So Landon Act is someone that I'm very high on as well. But that's going to do it for this episode of Dodgers Dugout. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you have not yet... Do me a huge favor, so hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button. Not for me, but so you can win a Yoshinobu Yamamoto jersey. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment Yamamania down below. By the way, it was really cool to meet a lot of you guys. Pretty overwhelming how uh, how many of you guys were rocking with the show. It was really, really awesome meeting you guys, and you guys uh, have some shout-outs, too. I'll give you some shout-outs tomorrow, too, but uh, I met a lot of you Dodger fans out there at the game, during spring training, at Camelback Ranch, and yeah, just want to send a shout-out to you guys, because without you guys, this show is not what it is. Who do we got? We had... 
We had Sam. We had Hunter. We had Matt. We had Cade. We had of all these lists of names. I'm gonna give shout outs to during the week people that I met that uh, were really really cool. Too many to kind of name, but. Hey, I did write down some of them, but thanks again, guys. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. Until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.